Hi guys, this is a demonstration of a UEFI multi-boot. I've got WinPE on the second partition of the UEFI drive. You can see here in the BIOS boot up menu screen, I've got two options to boot to my Corsair Voyager GT3 USB drive. One is a UEFI option and the other is just the normal legacy MBR boot option, which I'm going to ignore. So I've chosen the UEFI boot option and I've got two choices here. One is to boot to switch it to be 64-bit and one is 32-bit. Because this is a 64-bit is UEFI BIOS, the 32-bit option doesn't work. So I've just demonstrated that here. So let's go back in again and this time we'll EFI boot, choose the EFI boot option and boot to switch it to be 64, which is the UEFI 64-bit boot. And you'll see this loads um, a version of Windows PE, 64-bit Windows PE, which is on my second partition of the U the USB drive. This particular version of WinPE is Russian, but it's a very small version of WinPE, which is why I chose it. But all we need it for is to load switch E to B, which you see here is automatically loaded immediately. So now you can select, find your USB drive, and you can select an image PTN file from the drive. In this case, I've only got one file, which is a memtest image PTN file. So we select that using WinPE on switch ETB. So once we've done that, it will change the partition over. So our ETB partition is lo no longer there. And instead, it'll be replaced by the memtest contents of the image PTN file. So we could just check my computer, whatever that is in Russian. And you'll see here we've got uh, two partitions here. One has got memtest 86, and the other partition was uh, still our um, WinPE partition, which is the one we currently booted to. So here's the uh, image PTN partition. So let's now reboot again. And you'll see this time we've got three boot options here. We've got two partitions, which are both FAT32. So the first one has got memtest 86. And the second one has our um, WinPE files on. So let's just choose to boot from the first partition. And it runs memtest86. Which takes a little while to run, but eventually it will get there. So this partition, this image PTN file could have anything on it. It could have memtest86, it could have Ubuntu, it could have Windows install files. Um, it could have a conboot, it could have um, whatever UEFI files you like. Uh, it's just a FAT32 partition, which will UEFI boot. So let's reboot again. This time we'll choose the second partition on that USB drive, which is our WinPE files again. So again, we get the same menu. Make sure we choose UEFI64 because it's a 64-bit UEFI um, system. And that will should boot again now into our mini WinPE, which is our Russian mini WinPE. You can change the WinPE to whatever WinPE you like. It's just quick to load this one because it's a very small version. And then once we get to switch ETB, we can just um, restore the ETB partition. A few seconds, and once you've done that, um, you can now select any other image PTN file you like. So we just see, check here. Now we've got our ETB partition back, which has got our ISO folder in it, etc. So now we can pick, uh, in using switch ETB, we can pick any other .image PTN file that we've got on that drive. Load another UEFI uh, FAT32 partition and um, boot to that. So here we are back again. We've got um, just a WinPE option for UEFI, and then there's the normal E2B MBR boot menu option. So in this part of the video, I'm going to show you how to make UEFI easy to boot drive. So first of all, you need to find out what sort of USB hard disk you've got, uh, whether it's a hard disk or a flash drive, a removable drive. Uh, Windows 10 latest versions can see both partitions on a removable drive, but if you've got an older version of Windows 10 or Windows 7 or Windows 8, you'll do better with a USB hard disk. 
because it can't see the second partition on a USB flash drive. Um, just make your USB drive in the normal way and you'll get two partitions after you've made your ETB drive. If the second partition is uh, made by ETB then uh, it'll be an NTFS partition and you'll need to reformat it. If it's just a small second partition you'll need to resize the partitions on your drive. For compatibility's sake, I suggest you keep the size to 128 gigabytes for the easy to boot partition, the first partition. And if you can, keep the second partition to within 128 gigabytes as well. This is in case of any um, MBR BIOS compatibility issues. So I suggest you use um, Ease US Home Partition Master, which is free to change the partitions on your E2B USB drive after you've made it. Um, Windows Disk Manager is buggy. Uh, it can lie to you. It won't show you the second partition in some cases, and it won't allow you to format the second partition or make second partitions on removable drives in some cases. So I would avoid it for any work on USB drives and use um, something like Home Partition Master instead. So what you need is the first partition to be NTFS, and then to create a second primary FAT32 gigabyte partition. Um, it could be three gigabytes up to 32 gigabytes um, because Windows won't let you create a partition larger than 32 gigabytes, although Home Partition Master will. Um, but some UEF, UEF, UEFI biases don't like partitions greater than 32 gigabytes anyway. So um, I would suggest a, a three gigabyte partition is, is enough for the WIMPy files. If you have a very large USB hard disk, um, it's well over 128 gigabytes, you might want to use some of it for backup images, etc. In which case you can divide it into three partitions um, and use the third partition as an NTFS primary partition um, to keep backups on now, other programs, etc. But the first two partitions you can use for easy to boot and the FAT32 partition for WinPE files. I suggest you keep the first partition and the, and the second partition to within 128 gigabytes in total, just in case of BIOS compatibility issues. You don't have to, it just depends on what system you, you what systems you happen to find and how compatible you want it to be on as wide a range of systems as possible. So there are more configuration options described in Easy to Boot ebook number three. And uh, it describes also details of how to make the different types of USB drive for Easy to Boot. So once you've got this second FAT32 partition, you need to download the SWP FAT32 zip file, which contains the WinPE files that you need to add to the second partition. So just extract the files to the root of the FAT32 volume and it'll make its own folder structure. Um, you can add your own WinPE files if you like, you don't have to use the ones I provided. So here's the contents of partition 2. You see it's got an EFI folder and underneath that a boot folder and it's got the boot files in it for UEFI 32-bit or UEFI 64-bit systems. And the um, you obviously need a boot.wim file and a bcd and a boot.sti files which uh, it uses to boot with. And of course you'll need a second set of these files if you want to UEFI 32 boot. So if you've got a system, so very much some of the very few systems that uh, have a UEF, UEFI 32 firmware. And then after that all you do is add your image ptn 23 files. So these are the image ptn files but you just add the number 23 to the end of it or somewhere in, in into the file. You can have image ptn 23 auto for instance. Um, just make them in the usual way using the MPI FAT32 desktop shortcut. So as long as it's UEFI bootable um, then it should work and you just add them to your first partition of your easy to boot drive. 
Uh, this is just a, a quick word about common BIOS bugs or features that you might find uh, in your um, across various systems. Uh, these are all described in a lot more detail in ebook number three, and you need to be aware of them because it can prevent you from booting on UEFI um, FAT32 uh, drives. Um, it can it can give you errors, um, or you could just get, to, or even MBR booting can uh, can be um, blocked by some of these bugs. So it's worth finding out about them, and it will help you to plan how to. Um, make your ETB drive and how to arrange the partitions. Thanks for watching.